AI agents have been making a ton of headlines over the past few weeks, but what exactly are AI agents and how should we be thinking about them? I actually think it's helpful to go back to AI assistants. Remember, those were all the rage before AI agents took over and think about the upgrades that we've made to them to get us to a point where we have a brand new thing, AI agents. So let's go back to the original AI assistant, ChatGPT circa 2022. Now, right out of the gate, ChatGPT was awesome and took the world by storm, in part because of its conversational style, the way that it was able to understand the intent of users, and some of the outputs that were really creative and very interesting. Those were all great aspects of ChatGPT, but there were also some clear limitations in this AI assistant framework that has been addressed over time. So let's walk through some of those upgrades that we've seen since those early days of ChatGPT to help us think about how we've gotten to AI agents. One of the first things that we started to do was to incorporate better instructions and direction for these AI assistants. You might hear this termed as prompt engineering or custom instructions, but essentially we're just a little bit more clear about what we're expecting from these AI assistants and what personas we want them to assume and importantly what behavior we want them to avoid. Another big breakthrough has been in our ability to have these AI assistants reference documents before responding to a user. One of the key issues with AI assistance and any LLM powered application is that they can confidently produce incorrect outputs and don't always have the most domain specific or company knowledge that can make them more useful to a user. Now with access to documents and other data they can reference that source material first before responding to a user and see if there's any relevant information that needs to be incorporated into the response. This has really helped reduce the level of hallucinations and it has also increased the the overall level of domain expertise for certain fields and niche specialties. The next big improvement was around adding tools like search. Originally, ChatGPT had a fairly long gap in its training data set, so anything that had happened in the previous months wasn't available to the AI assistant to help with the user's questions. One way to offset this is to give AI assistants access to search and the internet. Now an AI assistant can look up information on its own and see if there's anything relevant that needs to be incorporated into the response to the user. Another significant breakthrough was in making tools like calculators and programming environments available to these AI assistants. A large language model starts with language and text, so mathematics and running programs aren't necessarily going to be things that it can do well out of the box. In the case of ChatGPT, by adding access to mathematical engines like Wolfram Alpha or giving ChatGPT its own compute environment helps a large language model powering ChatGPT offload some of that work to those tools when it's necessary. Another big change was in our ability to incorporate better reasoning and planning for these LLMs and AI assistants. By using different types of prompt engineering and orchestration techniques, we can essentially have the LLM think through various steps in advance which help it solve more complex problems. We also have built in better capabilities for troubleshooting and handling issues as they come up for more complicated projects. Another big upgrade has been in the ability for these AI assistants to interact with the external world and other systems. For example, ChatGPT and other AI assistants can now pull data from systems of record within a business and do more interesting work. Also, if a task is already agreed upon within the AI assistant itself, it can be pushed to an external system for action via API to have that task completed. The more eye-catching upgrades as of late have been the ability for AI assistants to interact with users beyond just text. Now you can chat with an assistant like ChatGPT. You can also upload images and pretty soon you're going to be able to leverage your camera and video to interact with these AI assistants. And that's just going to open up a whole bunch of very interesting use cases. All of these advancements combined show you how much progress we've made since the early days of AI assistance. Now we have a new term for this, AI agents. The neat thing about AI agents is that they're just better at dealing with complex problems. They handle troubleshooting better. They can plan ahead and they won't get stuck as easily. They can also leverage complicated tools like search, calculators, and programming environments. They also take action in the real world and other systems downstream and can interact with users in more interesting ways like voice and images and documents. 
I hope you can see why we're all really excited about AI agents, but we have a couple of interesting challenges that we need to grapple with as we're trying to productionalize AI agents. Number one is that they tend to be slower because of all of the different LLM calls that are working to make this AI agent work. There is a lot more prompting, orchestration, and tool usage that's happening in the background, which can sometimes slow things down quite a bit. Number two is that these AI agents tend to be more expensive to run. If you're calling a third-party LLM provider, you're charged on a per-token basis, which is determined by the length of your prompt to that LLM. These AI agents require more of those calls and they tend to be a bit lengthier. So you're going to have more tokens and therefore more operational expenses. Even if you're running your own AI agents internally, the LLMs powering these AI agents require GPU clusters to be running at higher workloads. So there's no getting around it. These are just going to be more expensive to run in production. Number three is the higher likelihood of unpredictable and incorrect outputs. We're adding an additional layer of complexity on top of LLMs, which introduce a higher likelihood of these AI agents making mistakes. That's going to warrant an additional layer of validation, auditing, and monitoring. All that being said, there's so much promise around AI agents, and we as an AI community are really excited about this new concept. You're already starting to see big players like OpenAI and Google launch their own general purpose AI agents. Additionally, you're seeing players like Devin who made a big splash a couple of weeks ago by showcasing their AI agent custom built for software engineering. You also have companies like Usher building AI agents specifically tailored for customer experience automation in sensitive industries like healthcare, insurance, and financial services. I hope you enjoyed this rundown of AI agents. I hope that it's helpful and a little bit more about AI agents. If you have any questions, any comments, feel free to drop them below. Thank you and talk to you soon.